Are you ready? A shot of wrestling. Episode 285. And wait, we go. Wait, you get a shot, boy. Is that the message you got? We are about to go live, but you're ready to rock. So take a shot. Oh, so take a shot. Oh, yeah. I'm a street breaker. I'm a heartbreaker. This is my dog. I'm a more printer. Drink a plan, it's a boy. About to seek and destroy. It's an SOW. Let me hear you make no Take a shot, boy. Is that the message you got? We are about to go live, but you're ready to rock. So take a shot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Shot of Wrestling. I'm your host, at Michael J. Putty, and my guest host this week is, uh, oh, shit, Mark Schwann's back. Welcome back. Oh, shit. Welcome back, buddy. How about How that? How you doing? Long time no see. I know, man. It's weird. I, I've listened to every show since I've been gone. Okay. I, uh, You know, I it, it's, it's weird that, like, there's a lot of people here, it seems like, that's on the anti Schwann bandwagon here. Oh, like who? Pretty much everyone you've had on. I, mean, there's only, hey, I don't know if there's only two design. people. You only, got, you only got two weeks. Feels longer. It feels, a lot feels longer. longer. Although, actually, no, because probably because in the back of my head, I was supposed to miss this week's show. Yeah. But here I am. <laughs> <laughs> who did you have lined up this week? I had a couple people lined up. Uh, somebody who forgot they had an office party this week, uh, tonight, so he couldn't make it. Oh, okay. And I was hoping to reach out to uh, a huge AW Mark, who actually has gone mm-hmm. to AW shows. He's a big AW guy. I figured I'd counterbalance me. And you, of course, get the report of the show at the USB arena, blah, 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 blah. But, um, you know, that, that's what I was actually, actually so fuck him. I was actually supposed to be there. I, I had, I had, uh, that's right. Yeah. I had, I had a floor seats for it. I had to sell it. I couldn't go. That sucks. Do you, you find somebody yeah, to get I mean, it? Get your money back? Yeah. Yeah. I got my money. Mm hmm. All right. Good. But yeah, no, I was, I was super bummed out, man. It seems like a pretty good show. That's right. Did you go? No. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm not, I don't know if I want to, if I didn't go to the Raw, I wasn't going to go to, AW, let's put it that way. But you've been going to, like, outlaw shows. Yeah, but those are smaller. Much more intimate, though. Truth. Figured uh, <laughs> the, the Dolphins game was okay because it was outside. That's another thing. You went to the Dolphins game. Yeah, but it was outside. By the yeah. way, I told you, right, they were going to beat the Jets. Well, everybody told me that. I can't give you the You didn't plug. believe it, though. Because my luck. <laughs> so, yeah, the outlaw I was shows, actually happy for you. The outlaw shows... You know, we're okay because, you know, the door's wide open. It was more, it wasn't as open as Green Man made it seem. <laughs> but now we got an outlaw show this coming week, no, December 16th. I'm up in the air about it. I don't know if I want to go now. There's Omicron variant going around. I haven't got my booster yet because I can't get it yet. So you can't get it yet. Okay. I actually have uh, my appointment set up for next week to get my booster. Yeah, I got to talk to somebody because I think I'm supposed to wait like 30 days after, not 30 days, 90 days after my antibody infusion. Which should be up. It should be up tomorrow. Okay. So I just got to find out. Can I still go? Do I have to get tested it's be- been, before I get it? I don't know. It's been 90 days since we got COVID. Yeah, man. Wow. Did you miss it? That you feels like go back? forever ago. No. Yeah. No. I mean, God, no. AEW's going to Atlantic City. We can go back and try to recreate No, I saw that. Fuck that. I don't want to go to Atlantic City for a little bit, man. <laughs> Dynamite at the party at the Planet Rose karaoke bar? No. You know what's funny? Like so many people actually, they saw the picture that I put on Instagram about like where I got COVID, mm-hmm. and like people have reached out like, "Hey, is that the the the, the Rose Bar?" Oh, really? Like they, they 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 knew the place. I'm like, how the fuck do you fucking know this? I guess it's infamous. Like, is it that hopping of a karaoke bar, or you know, hot spot for disease? <laughs> they do, they <laughs> do say strippers is. and sluts go there, so who knows? Was it? Was it, it was, it was, was like it, what, what, stripper night. Wednesday night stripper night. Yeah. Fully clothed, though. Fully clothed. Because the strip clubs for everyone on Wednesday nights. I'm like, why are you telling me this? Give me, just give me a fucking drink. <laughs> Maybe he was trying to warn us. Maybe he was trying to Maybe. save us. Was like, he was a nice guy. Hey, man, it's stripper night. You guys might want to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, he was a nice guy. So maybe that was it. <laughs> hey, at least all we caught was COVID. We didn't catch anything else from that. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a glass half full. Right. Although we could have died from this. So yeah, I'll probably go to all this coming week again. December 16th at the Queens Brewery, but I might like wear the mask inside. I might be that guy. You know, they're, they're so actually, uh, I was going to bring this up later in the show, but I don't know if you saw the news. Oh, it's mandatory now, right? The, 
Yeah, it's going to be mandatory Good. starting Monday. All right, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. So I don't feel like Thanks a to the governor. I won't feel like a nerd. I dig that. I do dig that. I hate wearing masks. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind it so much in the winter because it gets fucking cold. Mm-hmm, but, but uh, you know, people are not doing their job. I don't think there's any way the masks people are going to wear masks on Thursday because you know people will be drinking, they're eating, they're talking. So, right, I'm sure you try to keep mine as my, much as possible. That's not my slam again. It's a hard to keep mask on when you're eating and drinking and talking to people. Yeah. No, of course. My mom brought up a good point today when I was talking to her about it. She was uh, saying, oh, "Well, who's going to enforce this?" Yeah, it's a good. It's a good point because, like, you know, not for nothing. You know, how many people in the police force and FDNY like they're not vaccinated, and there's a whole thing about that whether they should continue working or not. Blah blah blah. You know, so who's enforcing this? Who knows? That's not our job to figure that out. I'm just gonna wear my mask like a good old boy, and get my drink with a straw. Yep. And sip a straw under my mask. And have a good time. You're a brewery, though. Are you going to sip your beer through a straw? I don't drink beer markers. I drink mixed drinks. At a brewery? I, no. Yeah, they have mixed drinks. But they're like pre-mixed. I, know, I mean, I know. Th- pre- I know they pre-mixed, mixed No, they're pre-mixed, pre- they're pre-mixed drinks. So if I ask for like a spiked lemonade or something, they take it out of the tap. It's really interesting. I never saw that before. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, I, I agree. You can't drink, gotta, beer. You can't drink beer, beer or a straw, but mixed drinks will be fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. You really don't drink beer at all, huh? No, I used to, but the carbonation just kills me, man. I can't do carbon. Mm. I can't do carbonations anymore. I can barely do these energy drinks. But now I started going back to beer, but then the carbonation hit me again, and it just would make me full and like not feel good. Interesting. Like I wouldn't get okay. a buzz. I wouldn't get like drunk. I wouldn't feel like relaxed. I would just get like, you know, that itis. Well, liquor is healthier, actually, and quicker. <laughs> which Indeed, I need, my friend. Which I need, Marcus, because I had a shitty fucking week. So let's be forewarned, this episode might be one where Putty gets drunk. I mean, it's not too different. From nice. Me. It's not too different from other episodes, but this time I'm giving you a heads up. And also, I'm actually drinking today, so watch out, people. Just throw the format out the window and get, just get drunk and like see what happens. Let's just, let's just dance, Marcus. Let's just fucking dance. Yeah. Let's we'll fucking dance. Let's go. I went to the doctor on November 10th, my father's birthday. He tells yeah. me kidney doctor he says all right let's do a blood test again see where see where you're at we might have to do another kidney biopsy i heard i heard might but the hospital's calling me oh we got this order here for a procedure call us back to schedule it what the fuck is this i'm I'm still in the disguise that something we have to talk about no he put it through i'm playing phone tech with the hospital for a week finally get through them on tuesday the 8th she tells me that the order is only good for 30 days i have till the 10th to do it or have to do everything all over again Get retested, re- see them a doctor again, new order. <sighs> oh, no. Thankfully, they had one for the ninth this past Thursday. So I had to go to kidney biopsy. And let me tell you something. If you never had a kidney biopsy done, I do not recommend it. I'd rather submit to like weekly colonoscopies than go, ever go for a kidney biopsy again. Oh, no. It's that bad. Huh? I, I've, had a, I've had a colonoscopy done, and it's, it's not fun. Oh, it's fantastic. You fucking go to sleep. As someone who doesn't sleep I, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a solid that. night's sleep, man. It's just fucking greatest nap I've ever had. But you're awake. I had the you're... worst doctor in the world. Oh, that sucks. We yeah, were... no, I, I actually, so bad, I actually like, wrote a complaint. Go see somebody else. Go see my guy. My guy works wonders. Your, guy, your guy's in Queens, though. No, I, he's, I, in I, I need... he's, he's in Long Island. I'm not going to Long Island, dude. I, I live in Westchester. I need, I need Westchester people in my life, which is so oh, yeah. far and few. <laughs> yeah, that, I, hear, I hear they're sketchy up there, so good luck with that. Oh, dude, yeah, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> I don't know. Don't even get me started in Westchester. So that was my week. So I'm drinking mm. here because I couldn't drink yesterday. So I'm going to make up for it. And again, uh, let's, let's start, Marcus. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you, brother. Good to, good to be back. Welcome back. Even though you've been shit-talking me all week or I, the last I two not, weeks. I have not shit-talked to you at all. Go play back the videos. It was the guest hosts who were doing that. Saying, saying I'm smug. Well, that's facts. That's, 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 that's not shit talking you. That's, that's me saying the sky. That's like me saying the sky is blue. Am I talking shit about the sky? No, I'm saying facts. What what what's smug about me, man? Like people say I'm like the nicest person. You do. You say that. I I don't say that. You kind a of nice. No, I'm saying like other people say that no one, about no me. Said, no one says that about you. Literally, most people outside of the wrestling world say that about me. No, nobody. <laughs> maybe that's why I never met them. Maybe because maybe they live in your head. Maybe they're fantasy. No, I, I I don't hear voices in my head. I'm not Randy Orton. Clearly, I've seen those ads. 
Uh, yeah, I could, I could do abs every single day. I'll never have abs like that. Touche. <laughs> None of us will. Yeah. Yeah, no one. <laughs> Enough talking about abs, Marcus. Let's get into what's trending this week. All right, buddy. Well, I'm going to start off with some unfortunate news here. Jeff Hardy has been trending all over Twitter. Uh, Sean, Ra- Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com, at Sean Ross Sapp. Fightful has learned WWE has released Jeff Hardy. That is unfortunate news, man. And a lot of Jeff Hardy fans out there. Uh, Sean Ross continues on another tweet. I've heard WWE offered Jeff Hardy help and rehab, and it was not accepted. Here's to hoping things get better for him. How do you feel about this, buddy, man? Like, you know, I know there are a lot of Jeff Hardy fans out there. I, I know I've said I've never been the biggest Jeff Hardy fan as a performer, but he's still a person at the end of the day. And I think that it's, it's unfortunate to see him go go back to go back to his demons, if you will. Yeah, it sucks. You, you don't want to hear about stories about this. I mean, there's no confirmation that he is off the wagon, I guess. But if they're offering him rehab again, then something they know something more than I do. We do. Well, the, there there was an incident apparently at a live show. He just left. He bounced. He's like, I'm done. And then he, yeah, he no showed the next night. Apparently, he no showed some autograph signings, and just, so, uh, they were doing pretty well. He was doing pretty well. I remember they, they did the whole angle twenty twenty with Sheamus because apparently he okayed that because he felt his demons were behind him. Right. But they uh, they say, man, you're once you're an addict, you're an addict for life. No matter how long you go without yeah. indulging, it, the the temptation is always there. Yeah, and like you know, wrestling and I feel like rock and roll are kind of like the same in a way. With like the grueling schedule and especially like more so with wrestling, like the, the the toll it takes in your body and how long you're away from your family, it, and uh, you know it, it's uh, it's got to be tough. It's definitely got to be tough. So like they they to deal with that, they have their vices, you know, especially for someone that's an addict or recovering addict. Like mm-hmm. that that's a tough lifestyle to live, man. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, it really we- does. Jeff Hardy was uh, he's, he's, he's a he was a good fit. I was happy to see him go to SmackDown. A lot of good rivalries. Maybe I was hoping maybe one le- final run in the title picture of some sort, but womp womp, guess not. And you know, so many people have some great things to say about him, like professionally and his fans. The Big E actually put out a tweet at WWE Big E. Jeff Hardy is so beloved by his fans and peers. I have never heard a negative word about him, and he's always treated me with such kindness. Just wishing him and his family the very best. A lot of tweets similar to this from people in the wrestling industry. Uh, just nothing but great things to say by Jeff Hardy and just wishing him well. But, you know, what sucks with this is the fact, like, when, when something is trending like this, you, you kind of hear, especially when someone gets released right away, it's just like, oh, I wonder where they're going to wind up next. Or like, these th- conspiracy theories happen here. It's like, oh, I wonder if he failed a drug test in order to try to go to AEW with his brother or whatever. I heard that one, too. Um, there was, there was a lot of stuff like that. Uh, you know, thankfully, there, there's some sound people out there. I'm not going to read off those tweets, but, you know, one fan, Harry at Hazarix, he tweets, it is frankly disgusting that people are, one, celebrating Jeff Hardy's release as he's now free from WWE, two, suggesting it was WWE's fault, three, fantasizing what fucking promotion Jeff Hardy will go to, for implying Jeff used his struggles as a way to escape WWE. I have to agree with that, buddy. What, what do you think about all of this? I think it's, it's weird. That's the first thing people go to. I mean, everybody has been wanting Jeff Hardy in AEW for a while now. Um, I don't think this is the pathway to him getting to AEW. No. Because not only is it stupid, not only you're jeopardizing your career and your livelihood, but if there is something wrong with you, if you are off the wagon... AW going to hire you? No, your liability now. Right. I mean, that 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 your liability that would be a bad look. And plus, like if you you said it perfectly before, like once an addict, always an addict. You know, you, you can't just like oh, let me go off the wagon and get fired. Like you're you're going to go off the wagon. You're 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 going to go down a a deep dark road there. Yeah, you know, like you're you're playing with fire. You're not going to purposely do that to try to you know snaggle some way to get into another promotion. I'm not trying to make light of the situation or compare anybody. There are times where I've been like, I'll drink a lot and I'll put myself on a self sabbatical. Like maybe I'll stop drinking for like a week or two. Cause I can go back to drinking. Right. Cause I'm not, I'm not addicted. Addicts don't, addicts can't right. take breaks. Like, Oh, let me take a little, let me take a little holiday. Let me no. indulge myself for a day or two just to, cause I've been so good for the last year. 
No, that's not how shit works. And people who are assuming that is the case, it's, it's sad. It's, 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 it's really sad. If people truly do believe that, then I, I, I would question whether they personally know someone that is an addict or is, or is a recovering addict. You know, hey. like I, I, I definitely, I, I definitely know a couple people that are addicts. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, it's, uh, it sucks. It, it, it sucks. You know, it, it's it's not one to take lightly. You know, and I, again, you know, talking, I'm talking about Jeff Hardy as a person here, and I think that's another thing we have to keep in mind, man. Like, you know, it, it's just so easy for fans to just look at these people as performers or just someone that they watch on TV or they pay a ticket to see. But at the end of the day, I mean, these are actual people. They're not characters. It's not a gimmick. Uh, the, the, these are real people. They're, they have real problems, have real feelings, you know? And um, I, I think I think it's fucked up that people just don't, they don't think about that. No, they don't. Sad. And it's really weird, bad timing. Because I was listening to the Ric Flair podcast. And he was asked, do you, uh, Ric Flair was asked, do you think the Hardys will get one more run? Mm-hmm. Because the Hardys are probably one of the best tag teams to ever do it. And I do think they deserve one more run. Uh, Jeff's a loyal guy. I think Jeff, Matt are great together. Blah blah blah. He's talking, kissing their asses or whatever. Right. So Mark Madden and they were a great tag team. Yeah. So Mark Madden asks, "Where do you see it happening?" He goes, "Oh, Jeff's never leaving WWE." Mm. He goes, "Oh, so Matt will have to come back." He goes, "Matt will have to come back." I don't see Jeff going to AW. And then like this was like the day before he got released. I'm like, damn, bad timing. Wow. What what other flair to kiss a death? Yeah, right. Jesus Christ. But you know, how is he to know though? I mean, like, oh no, I'm thinking it just like it's interesting how they're talking about that because I'm listening to it thirty days later. But right, no, of course, the, 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 everything happens. I don't give a shit if Jeff Hardy goes to AEW. Uh, like I said, let's focus on him getting better first, and then we'll take it. From he there. he's he, he's got to stay away from wrestling right now. He, he he's got to take care of himself. Uh, I do find it concerning the fact that he turned down help. I don't know what that's about. That's weird, right? Yeah, some, like some WWE doesn't get enough credit for is that they are willing to help pay for not only their stars but former stars to get help. You know, they apparently they, they won't release the names, of course, but they have helped several Impact superstars. They've offered John Moxley help. John Moxley refused; he wanted to do it himself. Mm. And uh, why he would turn down help, I don't know. But said he has accepted it in the past. So. Right, right. So I, yeah, I mean, it's something to keep an eye on. Hopefully, he's going to be okay. It seems like Matt, Matt Hardy put out something. It seems like, you know, it seems like Jeff may be all right here. But, it, yeah, Hardy's you okay. know, considering, yeah. considering the, like, you know, the black cloud that's been on wrestling talent the past few years, where you hear these horror stories and just shit happening, man. Like, you know, you, you, you hate to see that happen again, especially with someone like Jeff Hardy, like, just going down the path of, like, the dark hole with the demons here. You know, hopefully he'll come around and get the help he needs, whether it's on his own through family or or through WWE. So be it. Like you know, he he just he needs to do his thing and just step away from the ring. If not if, if not permanently, then for a long time. Well, going on to some other uh, bummer news, if you will. Come on, I want happy news. Ah, dude, I know. I'm sorry, man. So uh, there was a lot of uncertainty uh, with Johnny Gargano this past week. You know, uh, this kind of blends in with tv takedown i'm sure you know as we all saw johnny gargano came out to nxt uh it seemed like he was going to retire or from from wrestling or go on to another promotion or say we had no idea what was going on here he had a heartfelt announcement and boom uh as we all know like quite the swerve at the end but it's been confirmed now sean ross sap again of com at sean ross sap johnny gargano it is a free agent. It is official, ladies and gentlemen. At Russell Puris tweets about this. WWE made repeated efforts to sign Johnny Gargano to a new deal over the past few weeks, but Gargano opted for free agency instead. It seems like WWE was making a big push, man. Like, you know, WWE, like all of their social media platforms have been tweeting out about Johnny Gargano, about the hopes of him staying. Like WWE on Fox at WWE on Fox tweeted with a big picture of Johnny Gargano with his quote, you will never fail if you bet on yourself. Hell of a quote. Hit, hook, hit me close to the chest there. Uh, it says, we hope to see you again soon, Johnny Gargano. Hashtag WWE NXT. Putty, we've been talking about this for, I feel like, for a few weeks now. Here it is, man. Johnny Gargano, free agent. What do you think? Good for him. We talked about it a couple weeks ago, like you said, I think one of your last shows here. And kind of had to shut the conversation down because like, we don't know what he's thinking. We don't know what he wants. 
let him. I would like to see him back. You want to probably see him in AW. A lot of people do. I, you know, I don't necessarily know about that. I, I, I want, I wanted to see. I want to see what's the best for Johnny Gargano, and I felt like personally that he, uh, he did everything he could for NXT, and a lot of people agree with you. I, 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 I feel like the main roster would have been a bad move for him. But also, I don't necessarily know if AEW's the answer or Impact or somewhere else. But then I also commented maybe he just wants to be a dad. And maybe, Seems like it. Maybe he'll, he even mentioned in a speech maybe he'll just stay be a dad until the baby comes. Maybe take an extended paternity leave. Uh, somebody on Twitter was it Twitter? He he said something about you'll see me soon or you'll see me pop up somewhere. They are thinking maybe he might do one offs maybe in Ring of Honor maybe in uh, not Ring of Honor uh, New Japan. Maybe show up in Impact, maybe do an AW Dark or something like that without sending any contracts anywhere. And then once he's ready to come back, he'll evaluate. Well, I mean, the is thing he's... is, he doesn't, he, there's like the contract is up. So there's yeah. no like compete clause or no, anything like that. He, he doesn't have to wait. He, he's a free man. You do whatever he wants at any time. So, saying, but like... I do agree with you. I feel like he does want to be a dad at the moment. He could, he could bank off merch. I mean, Johnny Gargano, he did tweet at Johnny Gargano. He does his quote again, you'll never fail if you bet on yourself. I can't thank you all enough for the love and support you have shown me these past few days. I hope you continue to follow me on this next part of my journey with a heart emoji. But he shares ProWrestlingTees.com. He's got a lot of merch out there available, so I know people will be buying that up. He's going to be okay financially for sure, Johnny Gargano. I got got the email Um, today, like Pro Wrestling Tees, Johnny Johnny Gargano's back. I'm like, what is it? And boom, open store right away. (laughs) Some cool merch. Smart cool move. Merch. Strike while the iron's hot. You know, it's a bold move, man. So, like, so I'm I'm becoming a dad for the first time. And, like, me and my wife, all we're thinking right now is dollars and cents. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so, like, you know, me making moves. Like I, I, I risked a lot starting my own business with local media. You know, acting is starting to slowly come back away from me. So that's great. So, I mean, like, even still, though, like, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty with, you know, acting's not, uh, like, a nine to five, you don't have a guaranteed salary. Uh, it's a freelance pretty much. And local media, pretty much again, same freelance business. So lots of concerns there uh, financially. Like, you know, of course, like, you know, we're focused on that. Gargano, man, like gambling on himself right here. I, I think that's a bold move. Like I, WWE definitely made a big, big push for him. I mean, you see in social media, like they're like, it's a thirst trap. Like, oh, Gargano, Gargano, Gargano. Like they're little goo goo gaga over him, wanting him to be back. He chose other pastures. Yeah, good for him. I said it. He knows best. That's a we can bold move. We can speculate here till the cow comes home. He knows what he wants. Him and his wife make the decision. It seems right now he wants to be stay at home dead. At least for his first child, I can't can, imagine. But, Candace LeRae is still under contract, right? Yeah. I'm not too sure for how much longer. But then is Kyle O'Reilly out, don't yeah. you think? He's also a free agent. He's also a free agent, but is like I haven't heard anything about his status right now. Uh, no, he's a free agent officially. I'm not sure when, but he is a free agent. Um, they were also fighting for him and made a big push for him to resign, but he re- he uh, refused. He wants to, I guess, be the free agent market. Wow, man. Wow. It's crazy, man, because you, you think just to, even just like two years ago, like someone's contract's coming up. Like It's like a no-brainer. Like They're going to sign back WWE because at that point, I mean, where is there really else to go? Like now it's just like so many options there. Like, I think it's just crazy, just like within a short period of time, like you know, a, a main player from WWE is getting offered a contract. Like, eh, no, I'm good. <laughs> like, you know? Well, again, I I'm not sure it was you or some like, one of the guest hosts that filled in. It's one of the things I credit Cody Rhodes about because I think Cody Rhodes kind of paved the path where like I'm not going to resign. I'm going to go do my own thing and make bank on the Indies, which he did. Yeah, no, he did. There is money to make on the Indies. I something I was surprised about when this I first learned about this. I mean, look at Matt Cardona. Yeah. Matt Cardona is crushing it, man. I mean, like, yeah, he, he's working Impact, but he's doing a lot in the Indies with like GCW and just all these other different promotions he's working. Uh, he, the dude is like, he's also he's a self-made dude. He's he's self-made billionaire. millionaire. Uh, he's got his own brand going on, so good for him. I, I think a lot of these wrestlers, man, especially like, especially talking with uh, with our guest actually, uh, our interview with Marina Shafir. You know, it seems like NXT, they do a lot as far as, like, with WWE at least. It's, like, helping people figure out their brand, their voice, uh, marketing, and not, not just wrestling. It, 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 they take a lot from there where they can go on and do their thing if they leave WWE. Which is also, I was kind of impressed, is that's one of the things they're offering. They're uh, the next-in-line 
collegiate athletes that they're signing to this new pipeline program. Right. They have access to the performance center, this and that. And one of the things they do have access to is marketing consultants, brand builders, help build a character, help build a brand for themselves. Like it's huge. That's a that's, a, that's, a, that's fucking uh, clutch these days. It, it's so huge, man. Because like you know, as a brand, here I am going to go on my uh, my soapbox here about branding. Right, but I'll, be as a I'll, brand... I'll be back. Let me get another drink. I'll be back. <laughs> but as a brand, though, it's so important because like, to build yourself up. Because from what I was taught from my mentor. You know, You're if welcome. you build a br- if you build a brand up correctly, it doesn't necessarily matter what you do. You you could pivot and do something else. If you, the moment you make yourself your identity, like oh, I'm only a pro wrestler and that's it, like you know what happens when your wrestling career is over? You know, then then no one's going to give a fuck about you. But if you create a brand, an actual brand for yourself, people are going to legit care about you, and no matter what you do, they're going to follow. And I think that's so important. And we're starting to see more of that, which I think is great. Johnny Gargano is one of the pillars of NXT Black and Gold, right? How, yeah, I feel he, like it's like an end of an era. He helped make it what it was. So now the NXT is going in a different direction. Does he have a fit there? Who knows? Everything needs a veteran locker room leader, but I don't know what's going on backstage. I'm not going to waste my time thinking about it. But what was interesting to me was during War Games, I didn't know about Kyle O'Reilly. I found out after War Games, and he said something. I forgot what he said after he was attacked by Von Wagner. But he, he dropped the Undisputed Era thing in the DX crotch shop. Yes. And I'm like, is that like a very subtle way of saying I'm going over to reunite with Undisputed Era? So I'm curious to see what this happens now. I thought, it was, I thought that was a nice yeah. little spot for, to get people talking about Kyle O'Reilly. He was very smart in doing that. So good for uh, props. I wouldn't care where he goes. But now that he did that, I'm like, you, oh, shit, I'm keep an eye on him now. Can you imagine? Can you imagine right now, like... Undisputed Era reuniting in AEW. Uh, it's not gonna happen for a while. I heard Roderick Strong signed a contract extension, so he won't be there. But as an AEW fan, Marcus, do you want that? Do you want? I don't know. Do you want? I don't know what I want. I, I, I never, I never fathomed that to be a thing. So I, 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 I never really thought about that. That's an NXT thing. I don't think you guys should go that route. I say you guys, AEW. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think AEW should go that route. Yeah, last time I checked, I didn't sign a contract with AEW. <laughs> uh, yet, Marcus. Yet, Marcus. You got to believe yourself, right? Yeah, right. I, I am coming back to professional wrestling, so I don't you think never they, know. I don't think they should go that route. Yeah, I don't. You, you don't want comparisons. The subtle reference is fine, but you don't want to reform them and be like a knockoff on disputed error. It kind of like it was reminded me. I was thinking about this too. When NWO came to WWE, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. It, it's apples, I know it's apples and oranges. You seen NWO Undisputed Era, AWWE, but I just don't. I don't think it. AW needs that. They have their own talent. They have their own roster. Build your own guys up. You don't need to have a faction from another company do it. They can do a lot of. They can do a lot of things here with this. If Kyle Riley does need to go to AW, I mean, I, I feel like they they could do their own reunion, but like they could tell it their own way. It, it seems like they the talent do they have like a lot of say. Oh, yeah, uh, creatively, which, which I think is good and bad. It's one of the big they, uh, draws of AW that the talent have more freedom, right? There. So they can they can they can create their own story with that, which would be cool. But you know, I, then again, I mean, they, they have uh, they have their own stable going, you know, with with the young bucks. Uh, well, Kenny Omega, he he's gone on injury. Is elite, like is the elite still a thing, or now is it the super click? Super click, they're going with. Now, right is Bobby now. Fish a part of it? Seems it because he was there tonight on Rampage. Seems like it. So, I don't There's a lot of different ways they can go, man. It would be interesting to see. It, it would definitely be a conversation starter. definitely be trending. I, I, I think people would want to see it. I think they would do a lot of cool things here with it. They can go so many different ways. So, like, I, I, I'd be all for it. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. I think we'll see. see. I mean, like, AEW, I mean, they, they just have – they do have a lot of talent, man. Like, I, I, I just don't know. I, I don't necessarily know if they can go another way here with this. I mean, we, we're starting to see wrestlers from AEW gang released. Uh, or were wanting to get released because they're not being used. Yeah. So can't blame them, man. There's only so many spots to fill. And you only have, I mean, not counting the YouTube shows, but you only have three hours of TV nationally. Right. So. Dude, I, I really feel like another promotion needs to be made at this point. You talked about it. Like the, the, you were like mm-hmm. the only person I really heard it from, um, but I, I haven't stopped thinking about it since you told me this. Like, I just keep thinking about it. Man, that would be so fucking cool. Like, there's just so many wrestlers open, out man. there. The market's open with Ring the of Honor. The market's Marnagon. so open. Jeff Jarrett is a genius when it comes to this stuff. He built two great promotions. 
I mean, he, got screwed, need... he got screwed at the second one, but uh, this the doors yeah. open. Why don't Freddie Prince Jr. is talking about doing it? They need the right uh, TV network behind them, though. They need the right yeah. TV deal. They need the right TV deal. They need the right names. I'm assuming we'll hear more about it next year because, again, the, the market's wide open. Just and it can be done. Like, AEW proves it can be done. So, And, like, just the amount of talent that's out there, like, w- w- I'm not even including independents right now, but I- I'm talking about, like, people that have just been released all together. Uh, you have, like, not just, like, a, like a, a Lucha Underground, like, a small roster or anything. You have, like, a major roster to play with. the entire roster of Ring of Honor as of, what, next week? Whenever the last show <laughs> yeah, is? pretty much, right? You have so, that. Like, so all down. the WWE cuts that happened. Yep. So, AEW starting to release people, as I mentioned. Again, their market's wide open for another competitor. Oh, it needs to happen, man. Like, so bad. I, I, I don't necessarily know what TV slot they would fill. I mean, now, now we're probably going to see like, more like, head-to-head stuff, probably, which would be cool. I don't know. It, it just, you know, like, you know, being being part of, of it in, in the wrestling world, like, you know, having friends in there, develop relationships in, in that wrestling world. Like, you know, you just want to see people get work again. You know, to to live their dream, of course. You know, so it just sucks to see people like sitting, sitting on the couch on the sidelines when they they can offer so much more. And then going on to other news here, uh, Kari Sane, according to the Macho Beard at Macho Beard for Life, Dave Meltzer reports that Kari Sane's WWE contract has expired. They wanted to renew her deal and have her return, but she didn't want to live in the United States and travel in the COVID era. She has expressed interest in wrestling again, maybe at stardom, nothing for sure at the moment. So the reason I bring this up, man, Kyrie Zane, obviously a big talent at WWE. What people often talk about was she was used right in the main roster, blah, 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 whatever. I think we all agree. Great yeah. talent indeed. I thought it was I thought it was interesting the fact that like it seems like COVID's playing a big factor there, especially with like wrestlers overseas here. Can't blame like our COVID situation sucks. We were talk- we're, well, we were talking about before before the show went on about New York's new rules starting Monday from the governor. Like, you know, we have to mask up again because it's getting out of control once again. Okay, no problem. Thank you, governor. <laughs> but, like, I, I feel like now, you know, we talk about the for- the forbidden door. And, like, you know, we have New Japan. We have, we have talent over there. There's talent in England. There's talent all over the place outside of this country. I feel like the door is starting to cl- close again because of COVID rules here. Mm-hmm. Uh, wh- what do you think about this, buddy? You, you think COVID is being a, it's going to be a detriment to like to talent coming here to see new talent or old talent coming back here in the United States? Probably. I mean, it won't be as bad as it was. The president of the United States has no plans on lockdowns or quarantines again, and there, nor there should be. We have the right equipment. We got the vaccines. If people just get their heads out of their asses and follow the rules, what scientists are saying, not listening to Joe Rogan, we'll be fine. I don't think or Aaron be- Rodgers being a critical thinker. Fuck Aaron Rodgers here. Because not only <laughs> does he get, he's fucking uh, immunized, he listens to Joe Rogan taking ivermectin. Again, these, four, right. these poor, poor animals who are suffering, who need this medication. Now that medication is shorted for them. But now he has a problem with his toe. Now he's listening to doctors. Go fuck yourself. Anyway, no, he's opting not for surgery. Off, 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 off tangent. What was I talking about? Fucking we're talking about fucking Aaron Rodgers. We're talking about we're talking about COVID and how it's affecting talent from overseas. Like, we, yeah, you you bring up a good point. It's not necessarily mandates. We're not closing the doors to to countries outside, no, but so not yet. But we're, right, uh, but yeah. it, it's it's funny. So I talked to my my cousin last night, who is from Peru, right? She's living in Canada right now. So you know, she's a world traveler. You know, I, and I asked her opinion about like, hey, you know, about United States, like, you know, how, how are you, how are people like viewing us right now uh, with COVID? Like, pretty much, we're the Florida of the world. She confirmed it. Like, they laugh at us. Like, they no, just look do. at our situation. Uh, we laugh at ourselves too. Look at these guys. This is this is my body, my choice. You can't force me to get a vaccine. You can't force me to wear a mask. But it, it, it's only for me. Women, you can't get abortions. It oh, just, God, no. it's just such a fucking. Oh, now, now we're going somewhere. Just a, just a, I, 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 told you, I told you, Putty's getting fucking drunk tonight. It's just, a, just a backward. It's just a backward world we live in, <laughs> where people don't want to listen to science. It, it is, man. Like if I'm, I'm if I'm Carrie Zane, or if I'm like Walter, or if, I, if I'm uh, anyone else, like you know, overseas, 
I, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the United States. I'm like, do I really want to go there right now? I get, no. get increase my risk of getting COVID or, or well, something else? Well, not only that, because you, you, you have the mask, the Purell, social distancing, vaccines, right. whatever. But you got to also. And then what if I want to go back home and see my family? Like, yeah, you got to wonder, like, if you come here, am I going to get stuck here? Exactly. Will, will, will other countries block us from coming here like they used to, like they did uh, last year? Because here's what the money's at. The United States is the be-all end-all right now. But, like, do you want to risk getting stuck here? Right. It's, 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 it's tough. It's, it's, it's good. It's and good I, again. I, I can't blame the talent. I can't blame someone who carries in. It doesn't sound like she's completely done with WWE. She's like, she's what it sounds like more like, eh, not yeah, right yeah, now, guys. She kind of she kind of was done. She wanted to go back home. She didn't want to live here anymore. She wanted to be with her family. Right. I mean, hard to fault that. She was going to be an right. ambassador for WWE. She was going to, I think she was going to be part of the WWE. I mean, I don't quote me on this, but, but NXT China, that, that, that thing they were planning. That. Uh, J- Japan. Oh, Japan. I'm sorry. But that fell through. But it, got, it got scrapped. Yeah. yeah. So there's no real budget cuts. There's no real reason for <laughs> her to be there anymore. So yeah, let her go. Let her let her go back to what she's doing. And the door's always open for her to come back because there's no animosity there. Yeah, and I mean, uh, maybe one day when we get out of this thing. In, Do you think we'll get out of this ever? 40, <laughs> in Forty years. If you look, what, you had a South Park special, yeah. Oh my god! Did you watch, I, I, did you did you watch bab- South Park? Did you watch the South Park whole COVID thing? No, I didn't. I heard it was great, though. Oh, man. I watched it last weekend on Saturday. I had a friend come over on Sunday who didn't watch it, doesn't have Paramount Plus. I'm like, let's watch it. So I watched it twice. Then that Sunday night, another friend came over. He didn't watch it. Like, So I watched, I watched it like three times in 24 hours. It's it's just so smartly written. It was great. Can we end on some good news? It, well, good news. I have an amazing interview. I kind of all right. Before we get to your talk about before. Good news. Hatchwell Jim Duggan's cancer free. Was that, was that, oh, heck, heck really? Has a gym, diagnosed with cancer a while ago, and then it came out this week. I think Wednesday or Thursday that he's officially cancer-free. Congratulations to Hacksaw. That. I met him a couple times. Cheers. He's a great guy. Cheers to Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Oh, oh, I was about to say. <laughs> now, Marcus, please, welcome back to the show. Let's get into your interview. Big, yes. big interview. With Hollywood's Corner coming back, I had to have a big guest here. Guys, give it up for the problem. Marina Shafir. Woo! Yeah! She's back. <laughs> I fucking hate her. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love her. She's so... What is up, Marina? How are you doing today? Uh, I'm good. I'm really leaning on the, the mom foot today. Got to get some shit done today. For, we're, uh, we got a lot of stuff going on with Troy. We've got life things going on. So, you know, just prioritizing You things. know what? I, I this, I'm glad you mentioned that because I have so much I feel like I want to ask about that because I recently found out that I'm going to be a parent for the first time. Congratulations, dude! Thank you, thank you so much. I'm going to have a girl, which is great. Oh my god, blessings! <laughs> One of those people that's like, oh my god, bless you, but like, blessings. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. And you know, and I see someone like you. Like you are a badass mom. You know, you're you're living your dream. You're following through with it. You and your husband, excellent shape. Um, but yet, you know, I see you guys are clearly very good parents, very good. We do. How the hell do you manage it all? Because that, that's something I will, I'm, I'm an actor myself. I'm in wrestling. And I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to manage having a child here? You know, I'm really uh, actually kind of happy that you asked me that because we, we don't. <laughs> we just, <laughs> we're not giving me hope here. <laughs> I know. Well, here's the thing is, um, it's about figuring out what your real priorities are going to be and like really being diligent and focused on making sure your time is spent on what you need to get done. And, you know, like when Roddy and I became parents, it was a transition. Like there was a lot going on and I felt I should have understood that like there was going to keep being transitions until until Troy is old enough and ready to like make his own decisions. We, we still deal with our own struggles, like as parents and as a a married couple, because that's life. Right. But I think what sets us apart and sets us aside is that like, we're really learning how to like go through our own while holding hands with the other. That's beautiful. And that is a struggle in itself. And I feel how much life we've lived together, we've under, we're have we understanding that's like real intimacy is like allowing your partner 
to go through their journey and just like letting them know that you're there. Like mm. that's, and as parents, you know, that's the, that finding out that, that that's the balance is like understanding when you need some help. Like we have a, we have like a safe word that we use when we're just being a little, say like we're being like too aggressive or just too impatient. Like we, we have a safe word for each other. We're like pineapple, like dude, chill it out, you know? And then like, we you know, we're still learning how to like take a second and be like, oh yeah, that was a little, you know, I need to reel it back because there's a lot of, we have like a lot of different atmospheres in our lives. So it's just, we're just trying to figure out how to balance it all and make sure that Troy never gets like the shit end of the stick. Because like, as soon as that happens, that this shit is not worth it. Like ever. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. Like, you know, I, I've always been gung ho on my dreams following it. It's been a hell of a journey. Uh, for me, that's been number one, pretty much my whole life until I met my wife. And now like, you know, I'm going to have a daughter. So it's like, obviously, you know, I think, you know, she's definitely the most important thing in my world. She's not even born yet. And, um, it's a crazy feeling, but yeah, like, you know, definitely don't want to lose hold of that dream because I, I talked to other people in the entertainment business. Like, Oh, wow. Well, what does this mean for you? Is this, are, you are you calling quits? I'm like, what? No, what? <laughs> I can still do this. I think yeah. I hope. <laughs> And you, and it should always be like, if it's something that you're passionate and it like this, that that should always be simple. And you should always have people in your life that will encourage you to do the things that fill your cup. It's just being realistic about how much, how much time you actually spend filling your cup. You know what I mean? And like making sure that there's still like energy being put like into the things that are important. And that was a big struggle of mine because like, I love to train. I love I, but I can't, I can't go and like, I can, I I can't just be there for like hours and hours and hours on end and not act like I have other things going on in my life. That's just not a reality of mine. I still have trouble balancing that because sometimes I'll have like a two hour training session. That's, you know, really great. And the whole, the whole point is like, cause I'm, I also work with a lot of athletes who are still competing and like still fighting and like those conversations that happen after you know training sessions that like like that's the, like the bond that you you have to like review and understand what's going on you know what I mean so like it's like there's a training session and then there's a conversation it's like a whole fucking thing it's like it's just how it is sometimes but like understanding that you know what I could do that maybe like once a week because that's like right. that makes me feel I love feeling like um my opinion is helping someone And, you know, I'm also learning that if my opinion is just my opinion, then that's an easy day for me. (laughs) Like, I I don't have to worry about if like, I don't have to worry about what other people think because it's not of value. And that's totally fine with me like that. That just made my whole entire day less stressful. So cool. Uh, That's that's awesome way to look at it, too. And it sounds like there's a lot of like, you know, being a, an excellent time manager and also learning to uh, improvise as you go. <laughs> Bro, I'm a mess, man. I, I, you know, I love that you get that about like, that's what you feel about me. I need to talk about how hard this shit is sometimes because I'm actually reading a book right now on while well, I'm doing an audio book. How does she do it? It's all about time management and like realizing like what you're actually spending your time on. And right. like really understanding what is work, like what is it to you right now? Like what is paying your bills right now? Like that you're investing your time in too. So I just think it's funny because like I'm not going to act like I got it all together. There's no fucking way I can do that. Because you do you good you do a good job putting it on that you seem like you do. I'm like because I do like look at you. I'm like, but well, how does she do it? <laughs> I don't I don't do like I mean I don't got it together. I just um I just try to put out positive moments of my life because that's what I like to see. That's what uplifts me. And like, that's what I felt feel like I got to put back into this world, but maybe I should keep it real with you guys for every now and again, like, you know how fucking hard it is like being married to another pro wrestler, having a child, both working at the same time, having a house built, uh, figuring out what it is I about my brand that I like really want to dive into and make worth something, you know, like I'm a mess dude. I'm just letting you know. I appreciate it. This hair is probably the only thing that got it going on right now. <laughs> Love the do. Love the do. Um, this is a wrestling podcast. So uh, as much as I want to talk about this all day long, yeah. and pick your brain. 
do let's have fuck- to pivot here. So let's get into it. So you transitioned into the indies after your time at WWE. Uh, I do wonder, though, I, you seem like you're killing it already here. Uh, you face some, some great opponents here. Is there, is there an extra weight added to you having been from WWE as you enter these locker rooms? Oh, fuck yeah. I had, um, Merce- I trained with Mercedes Martinez like six weeks back or something. And it was hilarious because we were talking about like what you do and how you do it matters. What you do and how you do matters. And, you know, like and he, and she goes, oh, yeah, but you're that NXT bread. Like nobody like nobody wants me because the way that I i you know, I was raised in NXT. Like I don't have that indie experience. I don't speak that language. I speak TV language. I speak what do the producers want language. Like that's the language I speak. Not that, not that that's a bad thing. That's, I'm sorry. I, what I learned was that, that being able to be a part of that process is it matters how vulnerable you can be towards people. Mm-hmm. It matters. Uh, it just matters because it that's what will make something really good. Right. Like a match really, really good or a story really, really good. It's like about what you want to be vulnerable about and how vulnerable about it you want to be. And coming from NXT, I got, I still get the side eye. I, I thank you for, really? oh my God. That's crazy. Nobody wants me. Nobody wants the shooter from NXT who's got a fucking chip on her shoulder. Nobody fucking wants me. Is it like a fear factor you think, or uh... I, it's a combination of things. Cause I, I've learned how to defend myself physically and um, on the Indies, you learn how to defend yourself verbally. Mm, and yeah. I was raised with two older brothers who bullied me. I was a really, really thick kid in school and I got bullied. Like I got it all in here. <laughs> so I guess that's a little bit challenging. And, you know, like I, I'm trying to take advantage of every single opportunity that I get to be able to be in a ring and, get those reps and understand that experience. Like my whole last year of, of NXT, I never wrestled in front of a crowd, maybe like more than once. Yeah. That's gotta be crazy, man. So like people, people don't, people don't want to understand that. Like I still want to do this. And yes, that is my, those are my experiences. And I want to understand how to be in front of a crowd and understand like what they want. And then I also want to understand how to not give it to them. Mm. You know, like, I just, there's so many just things enough, that, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm also why people don't, I'm a fucking sponge right now. I have, I look at my son and he's, he just wants to learn everything and anything, however. And that's kind of like what my mentality is right now. But I also know myself and I've gotten to know myself so much. And oh my God, if, if NXT and WWE didn't teach me any, like if, if they taught me anything, it is I've learned so much about myself and like who I am as a performer. I'm a challenge. I'm a problem. People don't want to work with that. I hope that they eventually learn that they need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the next challenge that you do have, well, that you have here at BCW up in the Northeast is against the world heavyweight champion himself, though, Darius Carter. At January 21st, Queen of North 3, first event back for BCW. It's a big one here. What would it mean to you, though, winning, not oh, just any championship, but the world heavyweight champion? When I win this championship, I want all the ladies in the audience to stand up. That's mm. it. I just, you know, I don't really, I don't really take too kindly to men telling me how to be humble, especially in athletics. Fuck you. <laughs> don't try to educate me. Do not try to tell me about an experience that I haven't had yet. Okay. If I was raised for anything, it's to understand and how to deal with surprises and things out of left field and all of the bullshit. So I have a lot of respect for him because I I think he's an athlete. But I think uh, as far as the message of being a champion, I don't get it. I don't feel any pride. I still as a fan of wrestling. I just I don't. Interesting. how, how, How so? How I don't feel pride about him being a champion. Yeah. Well, I don't really understand what it is he's about. Mm, Okay. I don't know. I feel like he puts off like he knows himself. And I question it. I just, I question the whole thing. And I, you know, I like a clear message. I like 
to know what my champion's about. I want to know why he feels the pride of holding that championship belt around his waist. I want to know. Okay. And I don't with him. So then what type of champion would you be? Exactly everything that he isn't. I would, how can I give this back? When I have it, understand what it means to me and understand how I can leave that promotion, that business better than what it was. I don't think he wants anything to be better than him. <laughs> that's, where, that's what I mean when, like, listen, it is what it is. I'm getting in there with a guy. And for me, I, there, I have a lot of different reasons why I want to become a champion than he does. Then he wants to stay a champion. And this is a battle of the sexes. And this is apparently going to be a battle of proving the points because I don't get his point. And well, I'm a pretty vulnerable person. I just I, don't get it. I think you hit it on the head. I mean, I have my personal experience with Darius Carter myself. I had my own run-ins with him. And, I mean, it's Darius's world. And in his world, like we're all just living in it. Marina, I personally hope you shatter that world for so many different reasons. I can't Listen, wait for it. I'm going to shatter it. That's just how it's going to happen. And, you know, I understand anything is possible. But here's something that will happen. He's definitely going to be either wiping with his other hand or limping to everywhere that he goes that is going to happen and in this scenario you talk you talk to people who know me I'm a pretty peaceful understanding human being but when it comes to being competitive I just tend to get a little bit ruthless and everybody learns it's an experience it's an experience with the problem Exactly. And he thinks that he's got the only experience to give. I personally can't wait to see this live in person rather than watching you in action on a screen. I'm going to see this and you're going to beat up an arch nemesis of mine personally. So it's, it's going to be a great feeling. Um, Marina Shafir, thank you so much for joining the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Queen of the North 3 at BCW, Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. Get your tickets now today. Marina, where can they find you on social media? Marina Shafir everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. It's all across the board. Just Marina Shafir. And uh, yeah, Darius, I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> Marina, thank you again for joining our show. Guys, back to the studio for TV Takedown. It's time for this week's TV Takedown. Man, oh man, I cannot wait for January 21st, Marina Shafir against Darius Carter for the BCW World's Heavyweight Championship. Great interview, Marcus. Marina Shafir. Thank you, my man. Awesome listening to you. I can listen to you talk all day. Marcus, you can go fuck yourself. Um, you, wow. You decided to announce during the interview you're having a baby girl. You couldn't fucking tell me your, your best friend in the world, the future godfather to your child, that you're having a girl? I, know, I, 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 didn't, know, I, I didn't know what presents to buy. Now, 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 now <laughs> I know because I listened to your interview. You know, okay, I, I deserve that. I actually do deserve that. I was in, I was in the moment they were talking to her about it. I was excited. I, I wanted to tell you on the air again, the, breaking the news uh, to you. But then I, you know, I was in the moment talking about you know being a parent and asking advice from a badass mom there, like you know what to do. And yeah, sorry, putty. No, you're not. <laughs> fuck, fuck yourself. I, I really am. Now, when you offer me the Godfathership, I might wait, make make you wait a little bit before I say yes. I think we talked about this though. Like, I, who's we? It's we, we 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 talked about who's this. We? this. We're not we're not have, we're not having we're not having Godfather, dude. Sorry. Do, you, do we need to go to break? For Maria Shafir, for Marcus Schwann, I have been your host at Mark J Putty. <laughs> we we have I, a TV still, takedown to do. You just insulted me more than I've ever been insulted in my life. I, I now you want to talk we, about TV? We, <laughs> We're not having a godfather. I'm not saying you're not going to be a godfather. We're not going to have a godfather. <sighs> Marie Shafir, thank you so much. Can't wait to January 21st. War Games. First big show for NXT 2.0. I don't know if you watched it, Trader, Benedict Arnold, but uh, it was a great show overall. I mean, built in by two great War Game matches. They were put well, very well together. The results kind of made sense. I thought the women's finish was a little bit weird, but I get what they're going for. The men's match was awesome, so, but I, I just—I I never really remember watching a bad War Games match, and this held up. But apparently, apparently, there, there's been a lot of talk. It seems like about the women's War Games match 
match was well, not good at all. Really? I've not heard anything like, bad about that. I haven't heard a bad review about this match, so please explain. Oh, let me see if I find it on Twitter. Dave Meltzer was one of them that, well, and I don't know how much I could say about that because he, I feel like he shits a lot on WWE matches, but considered like, the worst war game. Really? Match. I haven't heard of that yeah. at all. Okay. Learning yeah. something new today. I'm not going to be a godfather, and the women's match sucked. Here it is. Okay, here I, I, Dave Meltzer, quote, the women's war games match, as far as sloppy looking work goes, from that standpoint, was one of the worst long matches you'll ever see from a major promotion. Really? End quote. Um, yeah. All right. I mean, I enjoyed it, so go fuck himself. <laughs> uh, some people are talking along the lines. Some people are defending it. One person goes, look, were there some chunky spots? Yes, but to discredit how hard they were clearly working in that match is unfair. Yeah. It was a fun exactly. match. Yeah. It was a fun match to watch. I think both matches were fun to watch. I mean, was, was it the same as past war games? No. But it was still entertaining to me. It seems like it's 50-50. It seems like people are agreeing with you yeah. that you know it was, it was a fine match. Uh, and there are other people are saying uh, it was the worst war games match. I wouldn't go that far. I think a bad war games match is like pizza. It's still enjoyable. <laughs> War Games is awesome. Check it out. All right, so my TV takedown, I have to say, I, I haven't talked about Monday Night Raw, I feel like, in a very, very long time. But I really have to go with Liv Morgan and Becky Lynch. You know, Liv Morgan, I, I've i talked about her before in the past. I say I'm a fan, but even though like, I, I'm very critical of her because I feel like the fact that I am a fan of her. And I, I always said about, like, I feel like she's holding back. I feel like, you know, there's, there's another layer to her. And I feel like we've been seeing it. I've been gone the last couple of weeks. And I've been paying attention to the storyline, and I feel like she's been delivering time and time again. That match that she had in Monday Night Raw, she definitely more than delivered there. She what? showed that she could be the next women's champion. Won a lot of people over. And I feel like that time is coming sooner than I think. I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I hope she does get that rematch at uh, the next pay-per-view or, or maybe even Royal Rumble. I don't know. I, I think, uh, dude, I, I think her time is coming. She could be the one to beat Becky Lynch. She clearly has to be the one to beat Becky Lynch here. But Becky Lynch won this match by holding on to the ropes. Like she did with Charlotte Flair at, at Crown Jewel. Uh, not Charlotte Flair. Like she did at Crown Jewel. And I think Charlotte Flair, too, at uh, Survivor Series. Yeah, Charlotte Flair has pulled them. This has yeah. worked twice. And I saw mm-hmm. somebody, I think it was Twitter, said that should play into the finish in the future where if it doesn't, it doesn't work, and the referee catches her, and it leads to her losing the championship. Because now, you, and it makes sense because now you said it twice Crown Jewel and Survivor Series, where she did the same shit and it worked. Now, three times with Raw, fourth time is a strike. And I think I'm looking, looking forward to that. Now, is it at day one? I don't think so. Is it Royal Rumble? I don't think so. Do you think they will. You think WrestleMania? Do you think they'll give Liv Morgan the Royal Rumble win? And if, oh, if so, man. how do you fill in the gap between that and then with Becky Lynch? Oh, man. Wow. That's the thing I first thought. She lost clearly dirty. I'm like, all right, that should probably win the Royal Rumble. I don't know why I thought that because then I thought like, well, that's too far in advance. I don't see them doing that. It is too far game. in advance, right? In WWE, if you pay attention to their socials, I mean, they are kind of playing up where it seems like Liv Morgan is going to get a rematch, a rematch at day one. Day one, yeah. It, it, it seems like it's gearing well, up. Well, she win at day one because you're right. I don't think so. Right. I think she should. Yeah, I should is a different story. Like, what, what, what better way to bring in the new year or new era than having Liv Morgan win on day one-ish? <laughs> I had to do it. Like, I, I, I understand what you're talking about. Should and will, are, I mean, they're two different things here. But, like, I feel like story-wise that so makes Becky sense. So if Becky Lynch loses. It, 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 it kind of gives Liv Morgan, like, a little breathing room from, like, Royal Rumble or from day one to, to WrestleMania. To give her like that test run to see what she does with that championship to see whether she'll retain or she'll lose at WrestleMania. Props to the w production team focusing in on that uh, Miz Girl 2.0. Right? That was well, 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 well scouted in that. It was like she was like related to Miz Girl. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the same look and everything. I went to a friend of mine's house to watch Raw, who was not a wrestling fan. They put on Raw because they knew I was a wrestling fan. So watching Raw in the fresh eyes of oh, someone that's who- nice was not a wrestling fan it was kind of refreshing and it was a great analogy how they it was the year to the day the main event was trish versus Lita for the first time oh that's right a blonde that's and a right. red blonde and a redhead versus blonde and a redhead i think it was well played off i think raw was, did a great job this week and that main event was uh i'm looking forward to that much watching that match again yeah yeah it, it, it it's good to see like a, a good storyline like that take place in raw because i feel like raw 
has been like lacking. I feel like it's been a long time since I mentioned Raw on a TV take down. That's something yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, because I feel like it's usually three hours of just like me just like, oh, just getting through it uh, just to, like, you know, have something to talk about in the podcast. But, you know, here we are, man. Raw, like, has, Raw has had its bright spots in the last couple of weeks, but um, they haven't been as consistent as you say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this this is the one bright spot for like the midge as a couple weeks ago. No, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a match I never knew I wanted. Until yep. then, <laughs> I think I might have said that last week. Yes, exactly. Like, holy shit, I want to see this. Yeah, and they're telling a hell of a story. It's yeah. it's it's funny because I forgot who, who talked about it. Was it on the air with you guys, or did I read it somewhere about like it's it's funny how CM Punk and um and MJF had had their war awards. It's it's funny how how they did that. Like, it, it was I almost like I don't need to compare. I I I see the similarities were there, but like. Let me there were similarities for sure. Yes. Yeah. Let me just appreciate two great promos by four great men, please. Yeah. Perfectly said. Perfectly said. And not my take Buddy. down, but while we got this on the subject, you're an AW fan, you're a CM Punk fan. So let me yeah. finish before you interject here. <laughs> okay. And I'm also from Long Island. Yes. So let, please let me finish. This is not my takedown. <laughs> I just want to quickly talk about this. Okay. But I was looking forward to CM Punk's promo this week, and I listened to it, I watched wow. it, and okay. I was like, this sucked. Very underwhelming. Very disappointing. What he did here was he just cut down the Islanders, and then he would go to something else, which clearly did not work, got no reaction from the crowd. He would go back to attacking the Islanders. Talk about MJF, talk about Long Island. Nothing worked. Go back to the Islanders. Again, I think he mentioned the Islanders like four times here. And that's not what yes. heels do. Heels do, they'll talk about the, the team, shit on the team, get the cheap heel heat, and then go on to talk about their opponent. But he would he didn't do that. And then, like, after it was done, and I was digesting it, I'm like, it reminded me the days of Bret Hart in Canada, in which uh, Jerry Lawler called Canada Bizarro World. Because the heels were cheered in Canada, Bret Hart, Hart Foundation, for example, and the faces of Shawn Michaels, etc., were booed. What CM Punk did here was not a heel promo. What CM Punk did here was get cheap heat from a Long Island crowd. So I'm like, you know what? I can't I can't hate this promo because what he did here was fucking genius. Because what he did here was not a heel promo in Boston. What he cut here was not a heel promo in Miami. What he did here was not a heel promo in LA. It was Bizarro World. Long Island so, is Bizarro so World. So what I said here was like, <laughs> right, Maya Copa here. I think AW played this off their Bizarro World. It was really well done. Your thoughts wow. on the CM Punk promo, real quick. So first off, I have to say, buddy, um, I'm flabbergasted that you were giving A, no. AEW credit, and then B, CM Punk credit here. I feel like they did a good job because I feel like it, it's it's hard to predict Long Island, you know, like, especially with someone like MJF. They did a great job with that video package, by the way, with that hero swap well that done, they yeah. gave him. That was really well done, I got I got to say. You know, because Long Island, they could have easily booed the hell out of MJF. But you know they weren't going to. Same thing with Bret Hart in Canada. I, 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 I didn't necessarily know that. I didn't necessarily know that because MJF is just such a good heel. Yeah. We're at Arthur Ashe Stadium, which is in Queens. Not Long Island. And, uh, New York City. Yes. Not Long Island. Yeah, you're right. They didn't so. give him a mic, though. I noticed that. They didn't give him a mic. Here, he, 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 got, the, he got the hero's welcome, man. It's CM Punk, he had, he had no choice, man, to, do, to lean into that. He worked with what he had, and he did a good job with what he had. Uh, yeah. MJF, though, like that, everything about that was amazing. I, I thought that was really well done. You know, my friend Carson, he was there, and he brought up a good point, man. Like, the way they were, they're, they're kind of teasing it, it's like Chicago versus Long Island. Yeah. You know, they could easily, there's plenty of Long Island boys in the AEW. There's plenty of Chicago people on, on AEW as well. They can kind of do like uh, what WWE did with like Bret Hart's Canada versus United States, have like Long Island versus Chicago type of deal. They, there's a lot of things they could do with that. I, I, am, I am really looking forward to Chicago, um, to, not to, Chicago to CM Punk versus mjf to to see that match up uh see how it plays out to see i'm looking forward to see what happens next week even because yeah i mean like cm punk he did technically cut a heel promo but you're right it was very specific to long island and bizarre world where are they for winter is coming i do not remember offhand pretty much they're going to be back to normal because uh, they're, yeah, they're not going to be long island. Back to yeah. Normal, yeah they're going to be back to normal so not, i'm, I'm not curious Chicago see, is not long island yeah i'm curious to see what happens in the next town over see how how they respond to like last week's promos here. And I thought that was well done by MJF looking like he's going to be a hero, save the day at one point. 
<laughs> rushed the game. Fucking genius. That was fucking genius. <laughs> and the crowd, the crowd ate it up because that's what they expect from NJF. It was great. Well, well done by everyone around there. To, just to recognize, they, they anticipated and guessed correctly about Long yeah. Island's reaction. Especially that was the first time in Long Island. Yeah, it was great. My takedown was the Johnny Gargano promo. Okay. I mean, we talked about it more in the news, so let me just cut it short here. I don't blame them for how they ended it. The Grayson Waller attack. Oh, yeah, we didn't really talk about that. Was great. I don't know if I talked about it on air, but Grayson Waller came out a couple weeks ago and cut a heel promo out of nowhere. So now he's a heel? But he had a match against uh, Tommaso Ciampa, and uh, he was very impressive. Grayson Waller showed out, and he just was amazing. Like, oh, my God, this, this is not just a pretty face. He can go in the ring. So now we have him attacking Johnny Gargano on his emotional send-off here. It was great. It was instant cheap heat for Grayson Waller. And it also gives them a John Gargano, Grayson Waller feud if he comes back. And if he doesn't come back, it gives Grayson Waller the, the, the chip on his shoulder. Like, I got rid of John Gargano. I, I think this is nothing great, but yeah. great things ahead for Grayson Waller here. Because his, as a face, I'm like, he's just a, another pretty boy. I don't give a shit about him. As When he turned heel here, wow. I did not expect this from him, and he's delivering. I have to say this about Johnny Gargano. Uh, this was a typical way for Johnny Gargano to go out yeah. by putting someone else over. Put, put over a rookie right here, if you will. There's no better way for a veteran to go out. And Johnny Gargano, I feel like he, he stayed around NXT for as long as he has uh, to get himself over, of course, but to also to, to get over the company and get over other talent. Yeah, Johnny Gargano has been consistent at doing that. Shawn Michaels always did that. For better or for worse, what do you want to say about Shawn Michaels early on in his career? But he always made the other person look good. Gargano learned a lot from Shawn Michaels. And uh, obvious right here and how, how Gargano has left NXT. Grayson Waller going on to him right now. What, what, what was Cameron Grimes looking for a long time? To the moon. That's where Grayson uh, Waller's stock is right now. To the moon. You don't get more heat than that. We talk about NXT, how it rebranded itself, how it's a new version, how like we can't recognize most of the roster on there. I guarantee you this. After War Games... You had a lot of people watching NXT, or at least not live. They were watching uh, on demand. They were watching it on YouTube. YouTube. They're watching on social media. They're watching it any way possible to see Jar- Johnny Gargano's speech, to see what's going to happen with him, see where he's going. If they didn't know who Grayson Waller is before, they certainly do now. That was a hell of a way to get the heat on him, for to get his name recognized, to have people tune in to see what's going to happen next with this dude. Capital Heat. Capital stock, well done, everyone involved. All right, good things are ahead for Grayson Waller because he's fucking killing it. Good job. I was surprised. Props to him. Well, n- n- now it's on him. Yeah. Now it's on him. What do you do next? Fight or this? flight. Because, yeah, exactly. This is a big spot here right now. You took out Johnny Gargano. You took out the heart and soul of NXT, of the black and gold brand. And what so, do you do next to this? There are so many people who could have gotten this spot. Big, it's they're a big giving spot. it to you. Let's see what happens. What do you do with it? Exactly. I'm looking forward to that. He's got to hit another home run next week, I think. He's got to come out with the biggest heel promo he's ever cut in his life. He's got to well, he will. open the show, he, I think. He has to open the show, yes. He has to open the show, and he doesn't even need to say a word, because the crowd should oh, pull him out of the, the Roman treatment. Give him the Roman treatment after, uh, yeah. after WrestleMania when he beat The Undertaker. Doesn't say a, a word for what five Cause, minutes? Because what he said was after he put him through the, the table, like, just rip him apart. This is my house now. Just come out, get booed for ten minutes, and say, "This is my house now." Boom, bounce. I I appreciate that sentiment. I feel like we've seen that before with Roman Reigns. I feel like Grayson Waller's got to do his own thing here. Okay, to, fair enough. To, to me, yeah, but I, I I some sort of blend of that, some sort of blend of that, well, yeah. and his own thing. I think would be phenomenal. But yeah, the fans are going to fucking boo the hell of him. He's got to let that happen. He's got to let that happen, especially in, in such a intimate environment, such as uh, that that stadium there, and not that stadium, the, the the venue at NXT. It's such a close crowd. There are not a whole lot of people there. You, the, the boos are going to ampl- amplified for sure over there. And you're going to hear, you're going to hear it exactly what they're chanting. You mentioned 
it's a very small crowd. And uh, what NXT 2.0 debuted, it was the Performance Center. It was a very small screen camera view, very small screen opposite the stage entrance. Both screens have grown. I think it was the second or third week they brought back the video walls on the stadium, which I thought was great because I loved that in NXT, black and gold during the pandemic. They brought it back, so it was great. You hide the pipes, you hide the bare walls, it was great. I don't know if you know this, I don't know how you feel about this, but I noticed a couple weeks ago, I noticed more importantly tonight, um, last week on War Games, it's a small arena. But what they do with the video wall, they prop up silhouettes of fans on the video wall. Did you notice this? I have not noticed it, actually, and I, and I do want it. So it was interesting to me because, well done. Because when you have a small room, interior directors say, put a mirror on one wall to make the room look bigger. So what they do is they put out silhouettes of fans on the video screen to make them seem like they have more fans than they do. Interesting. Interesting. I noticed this this past week on War Games. You know it's there. You know it's it's the video game fans on the wall, but it works because you don't notice it subconsciously. Hmm. Smart move. Really smart move. Because I've, makes, ne- I've, makes, I've, ne- I've never I've never noticed that at all. Now, now I need to which pay is good. To that. You, you shouldn't pay attention to it. Now you do pay attention to it, makes a small arena look bigger. I thought it was really well done. Because Buddy, like, right. way, way to pay attention to the, to the small details uh, there. I, I got to give you me. that. Bringing it back here to wrestling here. I feel like I'll be ill of remiss to not bring up Paul Heyman on SmackDown with, oh, with Brock Lesnar. Oh, my God, dude. I have to say, it was cool to see them back. And it, it, they're not fully back, but like to see like Paul Heyman like, what the fuck are you doing here, Brock Lesnar? This is not the Brock Lesnar I know. And, you, 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 and then you also see like, Brock Lesnar coming back to the ass kicker, doing go back to Suplex City, kicking ass in that ring with Sami Zayn and his two nurses. And then you see the sick, sadistic smile on Paul Heyman's face, making me think, well, this is going to get interesting, especially when Roman Reigns comes back next week, how he's going to handle that, what's going to happen to day one. Will we see, finally see Paul Heyman realign himself with Brock Lesnar? It's been teased for months now. They're doing some long-form storytelling here, and I'm fucking loving it. I've always shat on Brock Lesnar for his mic skills, but last week with Sami Zayn and this week with Sami Zayn, I could do a mea culpa, man. Brock Lesnar, fucking hilarious. Brock Lesnar has never been that bad no, on the you, mic. You said that before, I too. I never but thought I, that. I disagree with you, but now this is just proving me that I am wrong. And he was just really hilarious, very funny. And Sami Zayn is also very hilarious, very funny, very great character. Oh, yeah. They were, they were it, very it, well it, together. It, weird good chemistry right there. Yeah. And now I'm curious. I'm surprised the Usos didn't say anything, which makes us want to watch SmackDown next week when Roman Reigns comes back. Like, is... I, I, I was waiting for the Usos to say something. I, 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 I was. I, I can't believe they didn't, actually. Because that was a big moment there. Like Huge. Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar were, were back there for a moment. And then Brock Lesnar was interviewed by the beautiful Caleb Braxton saying, what's going on here? Like, ask my advocate. How often has Brock Lesnar brought that up? Like, yeah. Bringing up Paul Heyman as my advocate, my advocate, my advocate. Great. The, the past few weeks. Uh, it, it's it's going to happen. Like Roman Reigns is going to get turned on by Paul Heyman. And we're going to see a reunion of Paul Heyman and, and Brock Lesnar. I think it has to happen. Anyway, Marcus... Let's get some go-home thoughts. What did you get from me this week? What do I got this week? What are we usually talking about? Welcome back, home right? Welcome back. Well, welcome back. Good to be back. Yeah. I dig it. Well, well, let me ask you this. Did you miss me? No. <laughs> what a dick. I did not miss <laughs> trying to find somebody to fill in for you, but I did not miss you, no. Oh, wow. Gee, thank you. I, I feel like MJF. I'm getting a hero's welcome here. On show. So for those <laughs> of you who wrestling. filled in for Marcus, by the way, if you want to fill in for Marcus in the next six months, boys on paternity leave, inbox at astrowrestling.com. Look at that. They're at three months. We're very progressive here on the show. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I will probably have to take at least uh, the first couple weeks off. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so whilst Marcus is on paternity leave, if you feel like you can do this, inbox at astrowrestling.com, and uh, we'll set you up. Let's see, man. Let's see. Let's see if, who can give like the best impression of uh, your favorite actor, Mark Schwann. Oh, I did. Hi, I'm Marcus. I'm the best ever. I'm the best ever. It doesn't sound like me. I'm, so, I'm, like I'm me. so sexy. I'm so hot. I'm like I'm the best actor ever. Uh, 
well, that sounded like just like you, man. <laughs> that did not sound like me. Hey, listen. Uh, let's By the way, uh, your favorite actor dot com, right? Yeah, your favorite actor. Is there, a, is there a merch store? I don't have a merch store. No. problem. There you go. Make make a merch store. <laughs> it's problem. money. There you go. But hey, for everyone listening, guys, please give us uh, give us a shout on any platform that you're listening to us on. Uh, give us some reviews. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, let us know what you want to hear from us. You know, who you want us to interview next? A uh, big thank you to Marina Shafir for coming on for allowing me to interview her. Uh, I had a lot of fun interviewing uh, Marina Shafir. Learned a lot there. Can't wait for Queen of the North three coming back for BCW January twenty first. Tickets are on sale now. And, going uh, quick yeah, though. Us- they are going quick. They're going quick because, dude, I feel like every single day there's like, been a big announcement yeah. uh, coming up as far as like talent and matches, yada yada. Man, it's 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 BCW. They said they're coming back in a big way. They ain't lying. They ain't lying at all. Nope. Uh, I'm I'm pumped to be a part of their journey. I uh, can't wait for East Coast Syndicate to be back there with them again as they defend their tag team championship against Blonde Force Trauma. Hell of a team. But yeah, I mean, you can follow us on all forms of social media at Shot of Wrestling. You can follow me at Mark Schwan or you can check out my website, yourfavoriteactor.com. Buddy, what do you got? Not much. I'm ready to go to bed. It's been a long week. I need some sleep. <laughs> right, it's been man. great having you back, buddy. Welcome back. You've been missed. Oh, oh! He said it. I've been missed. I'm a Schwan of a kind. Mm. So Mark Schwann's going to be out for a while in May. So if you want to be a guest host, hit us up at inbox at com and uh, come and need some co-hosts for a while. Yeah. No, I want to see this. I want to see who my eventual replacement is going to be here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, replacement? I think you're just doing temporarily. <laughs> so now you're saying you're done. I, I, no, I'm not done. It's a temporary replacement. No, you, you didn't say temporary. Temporary replacement. It's a replacement. I'm not, so, I'm, not, um, I'm, not going, I'm not going anywhere. Stop. That's not what you said. So... I guess I need a new co host. New co host. No, you do not. You do not need a new co host. Those of you who filled in for him while he's gone, you did a great job. And we'll see what happens. But hey, 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 how about If the person is better than me, then you have no choice but to go with that person. They'll be better than me. They'll be better than me. (laughs) Well, okay. Do I get an opportunity to vet this person? Can can we can we have like the person on? Can we can we so for Marcus? (laughs) Oh, wait, by the way, next week is our your end award show, our last show of the year. My favorite show, Marcus. You'll be here? I hope to be here. That's not I'm a yes. Aiming that to be is here. not a yes. My schedule is crazy, buddy. So, <laughs> Give uh, me a break. I'm doing my best here. So next week might be just me doing my year end awards. My favorite show of the year, The Putties. That will be our last show of the year. Let's have some fun for Mark Schwann, Marie Shafir. I've been your host at Michael J. Putty. Until next week. Party up. Hey, baby, I hear the bell ringing, hip tosses and body slams. Oh my. And maybe you seem a bit confused. Yeah, baby. But I got you pinned. Ha 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 ha. But I don't know what to do when I see them with that golden case. They're cashing it in. Authority all in my face. What is a man to do? Good night, everybody. <laughs>